Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. Holly's Haunted Heirloom The fog rolled in thick from the soul end, wrapping the Isle of Wight in an ethereal shroud. Holly Arnold, a 27-year-old historian with a penchant for the arcane, received an unexpected letter on a dreary November morning. It was from a solicitor in Newport, informing her that she had inherited her late grandmother's estate. Among the listed items was a peculiar heirloom, a brass locket tarnished with age, itched with intricate, almost unreadable runes. Intrigued and slightly uneasy, Holly decided to spend the weekend at the old family manor to sort through her grandmother's possessions. She packed a small bag, tossed it into her car, and set off, the coastal road winding through mist and shadow, leading her to the isolated mansion that had stood abandoned for decades. The manor, a gothic edifice with tall, narrow windows and ivy creeping up its stone walls, loomed ahead as she parked in the gravel driveway. Its darkened windows seemed to watch her, and the air was heavy with an oppressive silence. She took a deep breath and pushed open the front door, which creaked ominously. Inside, the house was a labyrinth of dust and memories. Antique furniture covered in white sheets stood like spectres in the dim light. Holly made her way to the study where the solicitor had indicated the heirloom was kept. The air grew colder as she approached the large oak desk. There, amidst piles of yellowed papers and musty books, lay the locket. Holly picked it up, feeling an odd warmth emanate from the metal. As she opened it, a sudden gust of wind slammed the study door shut, and the lights flickered. The locket contained a faded photograph of a young woman, her grandmother, Margaret, in her youth. Beside the photo was a tiny, folded piece of parchment. Unfurling it, Holly read the hastily scrawled message to break the curse, confront the shadow that binds us. Only then will peace come. A chill ran down her spine. Holly remembered the stories her grandmother used to tell her as a child, tales of a dark entity that plagued their family, bringing misfortune to anyone who possessed the locket. At the time, Holly had dismissed them as mere fairy tales, but now, standing alone in the decaying manor, she wasn't so sure. Night fell quickly, and with it came an unsettling quiet. Holly tried to sleep, but her mind raced with questions. Around midnight, she awoke to the sound of whispering. The voice was faint, almost imperceptible, but it seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. Clutching the locket, she followed the sound to the basement, each step heavier than the last. The basement was damp and cold, filled with relics of the past. The whispering grew louder as she descended, morphing into a guttural chant. In the far corner, a large, ornate mirror covered in dust stood against the wall. As Holly approached, the chanting stopped and the room fell into an eerie silence. She wiped the dust from the mirror, revealing a reflection that wasn't her own. Instead, she saw a dark, shadowy figure with hollow eyes staring back at her. It was then she understood the entity was bound to the locket and the mirror, trapped between worlds. To break the curse, she had to confront it directly. Stealing herself, Holly spoke to the mirror, Who are you? What do you want? The shadow in the mirror twisted and writhed, its form becoming more distinct. It was a woman, draped in tattered, spectral robes, her eyes burning with an otherworldly fire. I'm a leaner, bound to this cursed relic by your ancestor's creed. Release me, and I shall end your family's suffering, Holly's heart pounded. How do I release you? Destroy the locket, a leaner hissed. But Boer, for the curse will fight to survive. Gathering all her courage, Holly nodded and turned to the workbench, where a rusted hammer lay. She placed the locket on the cold stone floor and raised the hammer high. As it came down, a deafening roar filled the room, and a force like a hurricane threw her back against the wall. The locket shattered, and the mirror cracked, releasing a blinding light. The shadow of Alina screamed, a sound that seemed to pierce the very fabric of reality. Then, as suddenly as it began, it was over. The basement was silent once more, the oppressive weight lifted. Exhausted, Holly stumbled back upstairs, the first light of dawn breaking through the windows. The house felt different, lighter, as if a long-held breath had finally been released. She knew the curse was broken, but the price had been high. The locket was destroyed, and with it the malevolent spirit that had haunted her family for generations. As she left the manor, Holly glanced back one last time. 
The old house seemed to stand taller, its windows now reflecting the morning sun. She drove away, leaving the past behind, knowing she had finally brought peace to her family. In the weeks that followed, Holly couldn't shake the feeling that something had fundamentally shifted within her. The curse might have been broken, but the encounter with the dark entity had left an indelible mark on her soul. She returned to her small apartment in Ride, trying to resume her normal life, but the memories of that night haunted her dreams. Holly decided to dig deeper into her family's history, determined to understand the origins of the curse and why it had plagued them for so long. She pored over old diaries, letters, and photographs, piecing together a fragmented story that spanned centuries. The locket, it seemed, had been a family heirloom since the 17th century, passed down from generation to generation. Each bear had suffered in one way or another, but the details were often vague and shrouded in mystery. One rainy afternoon, while sifting through a particularly old journal, Holly discovered a name she hadn't come across before, Richard Arnold, a distant ancestor from the late 1600s. According to the journal, Richard had been an ambitious merchant who had acquired the locket during a voyage to a distant, unnamed island. It was said that the locket had once belonged to a powerful sorceress, Lena, who had been wronged by Richard and cursed the locket with her dying breath. Determined to uncover the truth, Holly visited the local archives and libraries, seeking any information about Richard Arnold and his voyages. Her research led her to an obscure maritime museum on the mainland, where she found an old ship's log detailing Richard's travels. The log confirmed that Richard had indeed visited a remote island and returned with the locket, among other treasures. Holly knew she had to visit the island to fully understand the curse's origins. She contacted a friend, James, an archaeologist with a taste for adventure, and together they planned an expedition. After weeks of preparation, they set sail, navigating through treacherous waters until they reached the island described in the ship's log. The island was desolate and uninhabited, its shores lined with jagged rocks and dark, foreboding forests. As Holly and James ventured inland, they came across the ruins of an ancient village. The air was thick with an unsettling energy, and Holly felt a sense of déjà vu, as if she had been there before. In the center of the village stood a crumbling stone altar, its surface etched with the same runes that had adorned the locket. Holly approached the altar, feeling an invisible force guiding her. As she placed her hands on the cold stone, a vision overwhelmed her senses. She saw Richard Arnold, standing at the altar, clutching the locket while a woman Elena lay dying at his feet, cursing him and his descendants. The vision faded, and Holly found herself back in the present, her heart pounding. She knew what she had to do. With James' help, she performed a ritual to cleanse the altar and put Elena's spirit to rest. As they chanted, the runes on the altar glowed, and a spectral figure appeared before them. It was a leaner, her face a mask of anguish and sorrow. I am sorry, Holly whispered, tears streaming down her face. I am here to right the wrongs of my ancestor. Alina's expression softened, and she nodded. Thank you, she said, her voice a mere whisper in the wind. The curse is lifted. As Alina's spirit dissipated, a sense of peace settled over the island. Holly felt a weight lift from her shoulders, knowing that she had finally broken the cycle of suffering that had plagued her family for generations. Returning home, Holly found a renewed sense of purpose. She continued her work as a historian, but now with a deeper understanding of the past and its impact on the present. She wrote a book about her experiences, sharing her family's story with the world and ensuring that the lessons learned would not be forgotten. Years passed, and Holly married James. They had two children, whom they raised with a deep respect for history and a keen awareness of the unseen forces that shape our lives. The Arnold family manor was restored and turned into a museum, dedicated to the history of the Isle of Wight and the legacy of the Arnold family. Holly never forgot the lessons she learned during her journey. She knew that some wounds take generations to heal, but with courage and determination, even the darkest curses can be broken. And as she watched her children play in the sunlit gardens of their home, she felt a profound sense of peace, knowing that the shadow of the past had finally been laid to rest. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like, and even better, like and subscribe. Thank you very much, and I hope you have had or have a great day.